Ladies and gentlemen, today we embark on a voyage through history, a journey that will transport us to a pivotal moment in the annals of the United States. As we delve into the remarkable tale of Brownville Board of Education, a chapter etched with courage and change, I extend a warm invitation to each of you. Before we set sail, I humbly ask for your support, a simple gesture that can make a world of difference. If you find our exploration captivating and insightful, please show your appreciation with a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more enlightening content, and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments below. With your engagement, our collective journey becomes all the more meaningful. In the annals of American history, certain moments stand as beacons of progress, guiding humanity towards a more equitable and just future. The case of Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas, occupies a hallowed place within this tapestry of change. With the gavel's resounding strike on May 17, 1954, Chief Justice Earl Warren led the U.S. Supreme Court in delivering a unanimous verdict that forever altered the course of civil rights and education. To fully grasp the significance of this landmark case, we must journey back to a time when racial segregation was not just a reality, but a deeply entrenched aspect of American society. The infamous Plessy v. Ferguson ruling of 1896 had enshrined the doctrine of separate but equal, providing a legal justification for the segregation of public facilities, including schools. This decision cast a long shadow, allowing the segregationist mindset to weave itself into the very fabric of the nation. As the mid-20th century dawned, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, emerged as a beacon of hope, a steadfast advocate for change. With a keen understanding of the pivotal role education played in the fight for civil rights, the NAACP set its sights on dismantling the segregated school system. At the heart of the legal battle stood a man named Oliver Brown and his daughter, Linda Brown. Their story, interwoven with the aspirations of countless families, became the catalyst for change. Denied enrollment in an all-white elementary school, Linda Brown's journey symbolized the systemic injustice that the NAACP sought to challenge. Enter Thurgood Marshall, a legal luminary and the chief attorney for the plaintiffs. Marshall's strategic brilliance and unwavering determination fueled the legal argument that racially segregated schools were fundamentally unequal, a violation of the 14th Amendment's promise of equal protection under the law. The case found its way to the highest court in the land, and the Supreme Court justices faced a momentous decision. The fate of a nation's conscience rested in their hands. Chief Justice Fred M. Vinson's unexpected passing in 1953 paved the way for Earl Warren to assume leadership. This changing of the guard would prove pivotal, as Warren's visionary perspective steered the court toward a unanimous ruling that would shatter the foundations of segregation. On that historic day in May, Chief Justice Warren delivered the court's opinion, declaring that the doctrine of separate but equal had no place in the realm of public education. The court affirmed that segregated schools were inherently unequal and violated the fundamental principles of justice and equality enshrined in the Constitution. Yet, as with any transformative moment in history, the path forward was not without obstacles. The ruling faced fierce resistance in the South, where segregationists clung tenaciously to their discriminatory beliefs. The strategy of massive resistance sought to undermine desegregation efforts through legal and political maneuvering, igniting a battle for the soul of a nation. In the wake of the ruling, the struggle for implementation ensued. While the court's decision was a resounding victory for civil rights, translating this triumph into tangible change proved to be a formidable challenge. The 1955 follow-up opinion, Brown v. Board of Education II, emphasized the need for deliberate speed in desegregating schools. Yet, the vague language provided leeway for local resistance, resulting in uneven progress. The fight for equality was not confined to courtrooms and legal briefs. It spilled onto the streets, where brave individuals like the Little Rock Nine faced violent opposition as they sought to integrate schools. President Dwight D. Eisenhower's deployment of federal troops to ensure the enrollment of black students at Little Rock Central High School underscored the monumental nature of this struggle. As the years marched on, the battle for equal education intersected with broader societal shifts. The phenomenon of white flight saw some white families fleeing to suburban areas or enrolling their children in private segregated schools. A stark reminder that progress was not linear. Legal challenges, too, continued to shape the narrative. Lawsuits arose, 
contesting the implementation of desegregation plans and raising contentious debates about states' rights and federal intervention. As time flows forward, a compelling dialogue has arisen about the identity of the Brown v. Board of Education case. Recent years have witnessed a thought-provoking discussion centered on whether this pivotal case should undergo a name transformation. Descendants of the plaintiffs from the Briggs v. Elliott case, entwined within the fabric of Brown's narrative, have fervently advocated for a name change to Briggs v. Elliott. Their impassioned plea for this shift is rooted in historical authenticity, highlighting their case's chronological precedence and magnifying South Carolina's role in the broader desegregation movement. Advocates of this renaming movement seek to honor the historical contributions of the Briggs case plaintiffs, recognizing its distinct impact on shaping the course of desegregation. The issue of resegregation in public schools has emerged as a poignant topic, a subject of impassioned debate and meticulous research. While progress has undoubtedly been etched into the narrative of racial diversity within schools, apprehensions emerge over the looming specter of resegregation, particularly within urban corridors. The crux of the discourse orbits around the interplay between the propulsion of school choice and the burgeoning landscape of charter schools and their potential role in fanning the flames of heightened racial isolation among students. Within this labyrinth of perspectives, scholars and experts unveil divergent viewpoints, painting a canvas where the trajectory of school segregation oscillates between decline and persistence, tracing the contours of a complex narrative. In the grand tapestry of history, the Brown v. Board of Education case shines as a beacon of transformation and a clarion call for change. Yet, as our exploration of its legacy and ongoing dialogues reveals, the journey towards educational equality is an ever-evolving saga, marked by challenges, triumphs, and the unwavering dedication of those who strive to shape a more just and equitable future for all. As we conclude our journey through time, let us pause to reflect on the echoes of history that still resonate within our present. The legacy of Brown v. Board of Education is a testament to the enduring power of courage and collective action. But our voyage doesn't end here. It continues through the conversations we have, the choices we make, and the bridges we build. And so, my fellow seekers of truth, I humbly ask for your support once more. If this expedition has ignited a spark of curiosity within you, if it has deepened your understanding of our shared history, I invite you to express your appreciation by liking this video, subscribing to our channel for more enlightening explorations, sharing this knowledge with others, and leaving your thoughts in the comments below. This is Bite Size Politics signing off.